Karen. Yes. I've been accused of meandering through life without any real purpose. Sometimes by you. Yes. Frequently. <laughs> frequently by me. Many people have said that. Can you believe it? Yes, I can. Well, <laughs> truth be told, it wasn't until very recently that I realized what my life's purpose really was. So in all fairness, I have floated my way through life mm -hmm. for most of it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if only I had run into our next guest sooner, I may have been able to find my direction a lot quicker. In fact, that's what this entire episode today is about how to access your higher guidance in order to help you understand what direction you're supposed to be heading in. And it all starts by unlocking those answers from your higher self. And it just so happens, Karen, mm -hmm. that we have the perfect person to usher us into this conversation since she's the author of the book, Trust Your Higher Guidance. Now, by the end of this episode, Karen, you're going to know just how powerful it is to trust your guidance mm -hmm. and even what tools you should be using to help you tap into this incredibly powerful intuitive ability. Great. This one's going to be epic. My name is Will. And I'm Karen. And unlike Mulder and Scully. We both want to believe. So we've embarked on a journey of discovery. We've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical world. We've thrown ourselves into weird and wonderful experiences. I even joined a coven of witches. And wait. You joined a coven? Yep, all in the interest of finding something. Anything. That will prove that there's something beyond this physical. Three-dimensional world we all live in. This is The, the Skeptic, Skeptic Metaphysicians. Metaphysicians. Hey, hey, thanks so much for joining us once again on this episode of The Skeptic Metaphysicians. We're excited you're here because this conversation is one of the most important ones we've had in quite some time. Jean Hansen is a certified higher guidance life coach. She's an energy healer and the co-owner of Realign Your Life Wellness Center in Mesa, Arizona. But not long before, she and her husband sold their previous company, sold their home in Minnesota, moved all the way across the country to start a business helping others heal in Arizona. So how does one just pick up and leave everything they know their entire life and move to an area they didn't really know? That sounds scary. Yeah. They do it by answering the call of their own higher guidance. And she's here today not only to share her own unbelievably inspiring story, but also to help us all to connect deeper with this power within all of us. Jean, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, well, Will, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here today. I read your book. Thank you so much for sending it. Really nice of you to do that. And I got to say, I really enjoyed it. Like, I really enjoyed your style of writing. I enjoyed the, the information you're giving. And I mostly enjoyed learning about your path, your journey, because you weren't doing then what you're doing now, right? No. It's all this wonderful awakening you had. You had the help of a tool, you call it dowsing, right? Yes. For those of us who may not know what dowsing is, can you clarify what that is exactly? So dowsing is, um, it's just a way to connect to your higher guidance through using a pendulum. And, you know, there's different types of dowsing. Of course, there's dowsing for water. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about using a little pendulum. So if if you're not familiar with what a pendulum is, it's basically a weight on a string or a weight on a chain. Um, so, um, you know, some, some people may be familiar with it. You can get yes, no answers from it, but you can do so much more than that. And so that's what I discovered, the pendulum. So I guess it's kind of like the original Ouija board. Right. Where in essence, where you're not ho holding your fingers on some compass thing with someone else, it, you're actually allowing the, the pendulum to move rock back and forth or forward or backwards to give you the answers. And you can actually like write out a, a board, so to speak, with the letters and give you answers by doing that. Is that right? Yeah. So when I first started, um, I, you know, I discovered actually the pendulum through an interview on Gaia. A woman was talking about connecting to your higher guidance by using a pendulum. Well, I was on this four-year spiritual journey, but previous to that, this started in 2019 for me. And, and in 2015 is when I started my spiritual journey. But I, when I had my awakening in 2019, it had to do with the pendulum. I got really curious at this interview that she did. So I bought the book she recommended. I bought a pendulum. And I just started with the book and went through the exercises. And the minute I picked up that pendulum, it started responding to me. And so, I mean, I now it's like 
for those of for those of your audience who may be watching this on video, you could see I can show you or I can I'll explain how it works. But right now the pendulum is just going forward and backward, which is my yes. So you're getting yes, no answers as the basic use of it. Um, if my pendulum goes from side to side, kind of like you're shaking your head no, and that's my no. And there's also a motion where it goes diagonal, which can mean a couple things. If I'm if I'm not asking a question, it just is kind of in wait mode. <laughs> <laughs> or going diagonal can mean maybe. I don't get a lot of maybe answers because I'm pretty good at asking the right questions, but sometimes you might get a maybe. So um, as far as maybe some tips on how to use a pendulum, um, you know, people like most people that use them or that are familiar with them, they're doing the yes, no kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I bought a chart book when I bought this book on how to use it. And so there's all of these different charts in there. And I was just like practicing and playing around with it. And I was getting answers that made sense. And Will, you mentioned a Ouija board. So there's an alphabet chart in my chart book. And that's the one that really got me going with this pendulum. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's doing this. So you can, you can spell out words. It's not scary. I know some people kind of freak out with Ouija boards and say they're evil, <laughs> but this did not feel evil. This felt like so good. It gave me so much joy just to do this and to get responses that made sense. So one of the questions at the top of the alphabet chart was it had some sample questions you could ask. And it said, who are my guides? And I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, that's why I did this, because I wanted to connect to my guides, my higher guidance. So your higher guidance is it's not only your higher self, it's also your spirit guides. And so I wanted to find out who are my guides. So I asked and my pendulum started spelling out mom Ooh. and then spelled dad. Uh, and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, my, both my parents crossed over. So they were no longer with us here in the 3d world. And so, you know, I just, I'm like, and, and then it spelled out a couple of relatives. So I'm thinking about this going, you know, I know that you can have family members on your spirit team. Mm -hmm. And I feel like because this is such a gentle way for me to awaken. I thought, you know, I know myself well enough to know that some people who have awakenings have kind of jarring awakenings. Mm -hmm. Like they uh, suddenly start seeing spirit or they suddenly start hearing voices. I probably would have freaked out a bit. Uh, that. that would make two of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm the kind of, I don't like scary movies. I I mm -hmm. feel like I was traumatized when I watched Pet Cemetery. So, you know, that was terrible. I, yes. Oh my gosh. I hated that movie. <laughs> but yeah, I, I feel like that was just a really gentle way for me to awaken these gifts and to get really curious and to keep pursuing it and to keep having fun with it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happened with me. So, you know, like as a kid, you're, you know, doing the Ouija board maybe and, and, you know, always someone was pushing it, you know, they'd spell out stuff and, oh no, it wasn't me. I did not do that, Karen. I'm telling you, what, not me. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. So how were you sure, at least at first, when you first started doing this with the pendulum, that you weren't maybe kind of subconsciously like moving it a little bit? to kind of make it through the yeses or nos? In fact, as a, you have a funny story in the book about your husband trying to do it and it just hung there doing nothing. So how, yes. how do you account for that? Yeah. I mean, I gave him, he was watching me do this and he's watching my hand very closely. He's like, oh, it's moving. You're moving it, right? And, you know, it was moving fairly, you know, big swing. And so there's a tiny bit of momentum there that like removes my hand because it's kind of hold I'm holding it up in midair so I did I gave it to him and it you know he's asking it's it would not move it was sitting there like a stone and you know and I I have a couple of friends who said oh I tried using a pendulum before and it wouldn't do anything for me I just I gave up you know but this was moving I mean this was moving in pretty big swings and so mm -hmm. I'm like I'm and and it was giving me answers that I never would have thought of. And the swings are big enough that you would have like seen your hand moving. Like it wasn't like a subconscious. Yeah. Thing. I mean, if you would actually practice with it, you have to, you have to move your hand to get that really going. I mean, maybe you get a tiny bit of motion mm -hmm. if you just try and make it move, but you're not going to get the big swings like I do. Or, you know, when my pendulum starts to to go in a circle, 
it starts going super fast. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and on video, sometimes it looks like I'm, I'm moving slightly, but you know, the, again, that's just kind of momentum. But I, when I'm working with clients, I, I do use it a bit in my um, higher guidance life coaching. Now I'm not, um, I'm not using the alphabet anymore. Um, and, and I was going to tell you about the alphabet because once I started using that, the words just seemed to come to me without even having to spell them out after a while. And so that's when my pendulum all of a sudden started swinging really big. And I was like, oh, my gosh, what's going on with this? And so I asked my guides, you know, I'm asking them a million questions and they're spelling things out. I mean, I'm channeling through my pendulum. And they said, when it spins like that, it means you're exactly right. And I'm like, oh. well, what are you? I'm like, oh, I get it. They're giving me a shortcut. So as it was starting to spell words on the chart, words would just come to me that I knew what it was going to spell. And, you know, first it was like two, three words, and then it was a phrase or a full sentence. And, but yet I didn't have enough confidence in myself. I had to make it spell it out. You know, I, I wasn't making it, but I wanted it to spell it out to confirm that I was right. And so um, that's what I did. But then their, their clue was, or their message was, no, when you say that in your head, that's right. So keep going. So you don't have to say it out loud. I don't know. I, and, you know, obviously we're communicating like telepathically or however that works, you know, there's no words <laughs> being like spoken. <laughs> but yeah. really you, you are, you are truly embedded in this world. And yet when you're talking to us about it, you're still kind of like this apologetic, like, well, you know, you kind of telepathically think you know, it's weird to say these things out loud sometimes, right? That these beings are channeling through you and giving you answers through a, through a pendulum. Yeah, I know. And, and I'm thinking, you know, is this real? Is this real? And of course, I knew it was real. I'm like, I'm not making this up. But I was kind of afraid to tell other people other than my husband. But he started becoming a believer pretty quickly when he saw some of the things I was doing. But now I don't need the pendulum to to channel through with the alphabet chart anymore. I'm just channeling through my clear cognizance. So you know, the way the words started dropping in when I was actually using the pendulum. The pendulum I didn't need anymore. The words now just drop in. So the pendulum was like Dumbo's feather, kind of getting you to trust in yourself that what you were knowing was actually accurate. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you're yeah. like, am I just, am I just, do I just think this is accurate? So I like yeah. that confirmation. Yeah. yeah. Confirmation. Yeah. It opens up the gate to your psychic senses. That's awesome. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, and a lot of people, they, you know, they're just using it again for that yes, no, but there's other, there's a lot more that's, that you can do with it. Or there's a lot more to it. And you want to be careful with using it and just going with what the pendulum says. So, I, you know, I can give you some ideas on that if you care for me to share more on that. You know, yeah. the, uh, it's super fascinating that we've not broached the topic of, of pendulum or dowsing mm -hmm. yet. So this, this is great. Yeah, I'd love to hear it. Okay. Well, so one of the first things is people often say, you know, should I do this or should I do that? And don't use should, you know, because you can say, should I do something? And you can get a yes all day long, but maybe you shouldn't do it right now, you know, or, you know, there's a lot more that could be going into the, that question if you're just being so general. So I do a couple of things. So first of all, say, is it in my highest and best interest to do X, Y, Z? Um, and to what degree? So a lot of times I will ask to what degree. So maybe you've got some different options and you want to know which is the best option. So when I say to what degree, I, I actually do use a little chart. It's a percentage chart. And mm -hmm. so it's like a half circle and it goes from 10 to 10% 10 up to 90% or 100%. And so like to, I might get, it might be to 90% degree or one option might be only 50%. Well, if I'm going between 50 and 90, I'm probably going to lean towards 90%, but it's mm -hmm. in my highest and best interest, right? So maybe we could just do a, a quick example of how this would work, something that's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, let's say you want to go on vacation. I do. And the first thing, <laughs> I mean, yeah. So, you know, the first thing you might say is, well, should I go here? Or should I go here? Right. So you're trying to decide where to go. Well, first thing I would say is decide what kind of vacation you want. Do you want the adventuresome, fun, all kinds of activity vacation or do you want a relaxing meditation retreat? Right. Also, yes. So 
<laughs> <laughs> so let's let's do the the relaxing kind of re, um, vacation. So maybe you guys can help me with a, let's do like four cities, and I'm going to do to what degree would that be in my highest and best interest, or to what degree would this be the one that is the most um, enjoyable for me? And it would be for you or for us. <laughs> well, we could let's will let's do it for you. So let's say you want to go on a relaxing retreat. Okay. Pick some good ones, Will. Yes. How about Sedona, Arizona? Okay. So Sedona, and and just so you know, I'm using the, the percentage chart, and my guides are playing along. They're just going to throw out some percentages. <laughs> so for Sedona, I'm getting 70%. Oh, I knew it needed to go out there. I knew it. Okay, give me another one. Uh, how about Jamaica? Jamaica. Okay, I'm getting 80% on Jamaica. Oh, that sounds like a tropical vacation is in my future. Let's see, what, where else? Barcelona. Barcelona. Okay, I'm getting 50% in Barcelona. Nope, go to Jamaica first, Karen, sorry. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, give me one more. Siena. Uh, Italy, yes, somewhere in Italy. Italy. Okay, so I'm getting 60% on Italy. Okay, so we have 50, 60, 70, and 80%. Now, if you just go with the straight percentages, you're probably going to Jamaica. Mm. But Sedona was only 70%, right? So that's pretty close. I wouldn't make a decision based on 70% and 80%. Now, the 50%, you probably can throw that out, right? That's probably not going to be the one that you want to go to. But I'd probably be looking at those two higher ones. And so then what you want to do is start thinking about it. Start thinking, okay, so what about the travel? Is it going to be really expensive or is it going to be really uh, inconvenient to travel to a location that, what do we have, Sedona and, and Jamaica? So mm -hmm. how easy is it going to be to travel to Jamaica? You know, maybe it's going to be more convenient. I know when Steve and I went to St. Lucia, we had to spend overnight in Atlanta. It was a real pain. It took forever to get there. Yeah, we'll see so that things. would be a consideration. What are the accommodations going to be like? What actually are you going to be able to do in Jamaica versus Sedona? Is this an alone vacation you're taking, Will? Um, I'm thinking that's what you were thinking, just you going. No, I was not. Your, your choices of places. Okay, maybe I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. No, so here it is. It, truly, full disclosure, Jean, I've been talking about doing a meditation retreat for a long time. And these retreats, by how they're created, right, that you get the most out of it if you are solitary, if you go by yourself. So that's probably what I was thinking. Now, if we were to go someplace as a family, maybe Sedona and Jamaica may not be our number one priorities. But not that that's right. pertinent to what you just showed us, but to Karen's point. Yeah. Can you can you make any chart? Like, can you just make your, like, yes. your family members' names and and... Wow, yep. I like that. Yeah, so you can, yeah, you can make a chart. You can just like, let's say you, I mean, restaurants. You want to pick a restaurant. You write down four restaurants and do it on a chart. And you see if it points to one. You know, you can do fun stuff like that. Oh, so I never have to make a decision again. I like it. <laughs> People getting addicted to that. You know, like not leaving the house without, you know, the, the pendulum. And yeah, that, I, and that's how I was getting. I was pretty addicted to it. But yeah, you, you do have to use your own discernment too. You have free will. You don't have to go with what the pendulum <laughs> says. So you kind of got to decide. And yeah, the, so there's, you know, there's another example of, you know, let's say you want to take a course, some sort of course that you want to learn something more about. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I went through this with a client once and it was like, okay, so is it in my highest and best interest to take a course like this? I mean, first of all, should I even be doing this course? And so we were getting a yes. And then, you know, you could ask a question like, to what degree would I be happy with course one versus course two? Um, but I think you still need to really dive in, do your homework, do your research, really dive into what each course is about and see how you feel about it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there's one question that I think is really important, and I kind of talked a little bit about it briefly earlier. So a question is, is now the right time to take the course? So maybe you say, is it my highest and best interest to take this course? Yes, you get a big yes. But is now the right time to do it? Maybe that's a no. Because what if you went ahead and took it and then something happened, you couldn't finish or, you know, something went wrong. And now you're saying, well, why did I listen to the pendulum? It told me to take it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> <Darn> <laughs> well, pendulum. 
Yeah, darn pendulum. You want to, and I've had people say that I, I couldn't trust myself with the pendulum. So you're not digging deep enough with these questions. And so you can, a couple more questions that you might want to think about when you're using a pendulum is, um, am I asking the right question? Because maybe you're not thinking of a question that you really need to be asking. Um, how well do I understand the message you've given me? So you could do the percentage on that. So maybe you only understand it 50%. So, so there's more that you need to think about. Um, do I need more information? So, you know, think about questions like that. So I think that would help with, you know, how to use it. How long did it take you to really develop this ability? You know, it, it didn't take me very long. I mean, I think I would say the first month, was a lot of experimentation, especially when I started using the alphabet chart. Sometimes I would spell, I would be trying to spell something or get an answer and it just spelled out nonsense, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that happened. But, you know, after the first two, three months, it was really progressing pretty quickly. And, and that's mm -hmm. when I decided, um, I, I actually took the self-study course that the, you know, the woman is Jean Slater. She's got Trust Your Higher Guidance certification. And I contacted her because when I, this started happening, I, I went with it for a couple of months and I contacted her. I'm like, I'm going to, I decided to do her self-study course first. And I did that. I loved it. So then I decided to take her full certification. And so, um, yeah, by the time I was done with that, I, I felt like a a pro. I mean, my classmates were not doing anything near what I was doing with it. So I was really amazed. So then how do you get, because we talked a little bit earlier about your husband when he tried to use a pendulum and he just laid there like a limp log. That would probably be what happens to me. So without my moving my hand, how do you, does someone connect with this pendulum enough to the point where I don't have to move it? Well, first thing, in, if you buy the book, so Dale Olson wrote the book on, you can just look up Dale Olson and he's got pendulum books and charts. Um, he teaches you, I mean, you can actually train your pendulum. And so um, you can say that you can actually move it. So if you want your yes to be like mine, forward and backwards, very simple, you can say, this is my yes. And then you move it side to side. So you're physically moving it side to side. This is my no move it forward. This is my yes. And, and do that. And eventually, you know, then you start leaving it alone and see if it'll move. Now, my husband just picked it up again recently and he's starting using it and it's moving for him now. It's not moving big swings like it is for me. It's very small, but he's, he's making progress. It's not sitting there like a stone anymore. So yeah, you can actually train it. So that answers the question I was just about to ask you, which was going to be if someone else can use your pendulum. I didn't know if once you use it a lot, like you have an energy thing with it and no one else can use it. But I guess if your husband, you know, can that's a good question. Cause a lot of people are really worried about that. They're like, Oh my gosh, the energy, nobody can touch my pendulum. There's also some things about what the pendulums are made of. Some people say, don't buy a crystal pendulum because crystals hold energy and that can, you know, sway your answers. You need to buy wood well, you can see my pendulum is copper. Mm -hmm. um, I can, honestly, I don't buy into all of that. I believe you're just putting other people's beliefs onto, onto it. Sure, you know, you, you should probably clear your, your pendulum once in a while. I don't care if somebody touches my pendulum. I can pick up any pendulum in a store and it works for me. And I can just, it just responds to me. So I, I think that's a kind of a belief system that I just don't buy into. And is there any reason why you chose copper? It was kind of by chance. I ordered um, I ordered a book and it came with a pendulum and it came with a copper pendulum. And I like it. This particular one, it's small and it's lightweight. I had bought these. The, my first pendulums were really heavy. And I realized I, I don't like them to be so heavy. This moves really easily. It's not too light, but it's just kind of the right weight for me. So I just stuck with the, with this one. So you moved all the way across country based on the swing of a pendulum. Is that yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear how that sounds? I know. Well, it's better than the drop of a hat. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> impressive that you have that amount of faith and trust in this modality to, to have you do such a drastic change in your life. That's, that's, that's impressive. 
Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's, I still can't believe it sometimes. Because, I mean, we had a business that we've been running for 15 years and we've been in the industry for 30 years. And honestly, I was just burned out on it. I was ready to move on. But I didn't know, I had no idea what I would do because we were making good money and we had a plan. We were going to stick with it until we retired. And, you know, and I'm, I'll admit, I'm in my 60s now. This started when I turned 60 years old. I'm like, how can I change my life at this age? And it was just crazy. And my husband, you know, he enjoyed what he was doing. And so, it, you know, he wasn't buying into it right away. But that's when I, I listened to another guy I interview, and it was about the harmonic egg. And I know you guys have talked a lot about the harmonic egg. Yes. 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 Egg. Yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna talk about that a little bit yeah, later. So you do have a very special connection with the harmonic egg that we'll talk about. We're also yeah, yeah. gonna talk about how you actually help people to connect directly to their intuition, right? Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna take a break, but when we come back, we're gonna tackle those things. You don't want to miss the rest of this conversation because there's uh, there's a lot more to this than you've heard so far. But we'll be right back. And welcome back to the Skeptic Minute Physicians. We're talking to Gene, who is showing us how to connect to our higher guidance. So far, we've been talking about using a pendulum to reach into those depths uh, and to get some answers that we need, which is exactly what she did when she moved all the way across the country, upended her life and moved to from Minnesota to Arizona to open up a a wellness center. And now she helps people to connect to their intuition and, to, and uh, really find their way, their their path and their, their purpose in life. So before we left, we were talking about how you help people connect to their intuition. Uh, what are, what are some ways that people can do that without seeming like they're crazy? Yeah. So I have several different things to pay attention to because a lot of times it's really about paying attention um, because your intuition is always talking to you and it's your guides are actually talking to you through your intuition. So that's the higher guidance that we're talking about. If you want to connect to your higher guidance, yes, you can use a pendulum, but you really need to use your intuition as well. And so you've heard about the clairs. Clear, I mentioned clear cognizance earlier. So there's two clairs that are really um, very common to most people and they're clear sentience, which is clear feeling. And so we've, <clears throat> excuse me, we've all felt the chills, right? Something happens, you're like, oh my God, I got the chills, right? It was a really good thing and it's maybe something that you want to do. So that's that's listening to your clairsentience. You, we've also had that sick feeling in our stomach where maybe somebody wants you to do something and you, you just don't feel good about it and you're just like, oh. So that's your body talking to you. That's your body's intuition. So pay attention to that. Clear cognizance is clear knowing. That's when you just know something. You don't know how you know it. You just know it. And so that's clear cognizance. That's very common as well. And then you've got um, clear audience, which is clear hearing. So that's when people actually hear their angels and guides. And then clairvoyance, which is clear seeing. So either they visibly see spirit or they see things in their mind's eyes. So they close their eyes. They might see images and things like that. So those are the clairs. So those all, you know, are connecting to your intuition. <clears throat> but the, the most important thing that you want to do to connect is to raise your vibration. So I, I, think, I think you guys have talked about the book Power Versus Force before on the show. So there is um, an emotional resonance chart that you can get from the book Power Versus Force. And so it, it equates our vibration to emotions. So for example, people that are vibrating really low are gonna have a really hard time connecting to their, their intuition. They, you need to be vibrating higher than that. So the low, emo, the low vibration emotions are things like being in anger or frustration or guilt or fear or shame. The, the emotion of shame is the lowest on the scale. It's only 20 hertz. And if you're, but if you're vibrating in the vibrations or the, in the emotions of like love and joy and peace, you're vibrating between five and 600 hertz. Wow. That's a huge, huge difference. Mm -hmm. So when you can vibrate in those positive emotions really high, then you're much better able to connect your intuition. So how do you, how do you raise your vibration? Well, you can do a number of things. You can get out in nature. You can exercise. You can have fun and just laugh. That can raise your vibration. 
Um, you can eat a better diet. So eat as much organic food as you possibly can. That's, you know, organic food is high vibration food. Um, you can meditate and, you know, obviously meditation raises your vibration. You can have a gratitude practice. And a lot of people do that. Um, my Stephen, Steve is my husband and he and I tried journaling gratitude. We had a hard time with that. So what we've come to do is at the end of the night, before we turn out the light and go to bed, we, we say, what, what are you grateful for today? And we just say three or four things that we're grateful for. We're trying to always stay in that state of gratitude mm -hmm. because that's going to raise your vibration just because it keeps you more positive. Mm -hmm. I even do it during the day. I mean, I never, I haven't had to, to, um, to commute to work for 20 years. Now I have to commute to work <laughs> and I'm on a freeway and I'll see somebody cut someone off and, and it was like a near miss. And I'm like, Thank you for keeping me safe. Thank you for keeping the other people safe. You know, so those little thank yous during the day, that is really good. Um, staying positive is is hard <laughs> sometimes, but staying positive is really important to raise your vibration and really paying attention to your thoughts because we talk to ourselves like we would talk to nobody else sometimes, right? Oh, you're so stupid. Oh, you're so fat. You know, we say these things to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good thing to do. You want to be thinking po more positive thoughts. And sometimes you can turn those negative thoughts around into a positive. So mm -hmm. there's one example I give where let's say you're, you're paying the bills, you're online, you're, wa you're paying all these bills, you're watching your bank account balance go down and you're thinking, oh my God, money's so tight. Why is it always so tight, right? So if you catch yourself saying something like that, you can turn that around and this actually works. So you can say something like, why is money always so tight, right? But it's only a temporary situation. So, I mean, just shifting it into something positive where this, because you know that if you're going to always say money so tight, money is always going to be tight. Mm -hmm. So try and shift it into something positive. So yep. those yep. are all ways that you can raise your vibration. Yep. Yeah, that works, Karen. Well, what I try to say is, Thank goodness I have money to pay this bill. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes like, that's another one. Like, I can pay this bill. You know? right, yep. right. And I guess that's why people say to me when they meet me all the time, man, I really like your vibe. Yep. No. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I'm aspiring to. I'm being oh, positive thinking okay. again. Yeah, I'm yes. thinking ahead. No, I, I like your vibe. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's all about. That vibration. Yeah. So yeah. I mm -hmm. do have a couple more tips. So for um, connecting to your intuition and Curiosity is huge for me, and it's a really big one because a lot of times we just ignore the things that make us curious because we're too busy or we don't have the money to try something new. Mm -hmm. um, another example, you know, obviously the pendulum was the big thing. That changed my life because I got curious about the pendulum. There's another time I got curious. It was when I first started this journey back in 2015. Um, I met, I knew a gal from a networking group we belonged to. She was going to do a feng shui workshop. It was six hours of training oh, spread out over three weeks. Now, my old self would have gone, oh, I don't want to spend money on that. Or I don't have time. It's an hour drive from where I live. I'm too busy. Mm -hmm. But I just, I got curious. I'm like, I just signed up on the spot. I didn't really think about it. And that, that curiosity changed my life because turns out she's an intuitive. I worked with her for the next four years. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so she kind of was my spiritual teacher until I finally had my awakening. So, I mean, that changed my life. So curiosity is really big. Not to say that everything you're curious about is going to change your life, but if you're curious, start doing some research, start leaning in. And if, it, if you keep getting excited about it, that's a sign to keep going. That's your intuition telling you, yes, this is for you. Now, if you start researching and you're like, eh, maybe not, well, then let it go. That's not for you. Right? Yeah. And in your book, you mentioned the fact that not everything that you get drawn to is something that you should immediately jump into. Right. So really, the best thing to do then is just to ask your pendulum, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was drawn to the pendulum, but it took me a while before I actually did something about it. I, I did sign up for the course, though. That I was totally drawn to because I started studying her website. I absorbed every word of it, and I just got more and more excited. Right. So that was my clue. I'm going to do this. I'm going to start with the self-study. I didn't do the full-blown program at first. Mm -hmm. I did the smaller 
program. I still loved it. And so that's what led me on that journey. So yeah, that was a big thing for me. Well, those are really great tips mm -hmm. on how to connect your your intuition. More people need to know about that because it's it's super important. And I and I have noticed a difference when I am judgy and temperamental and all that kind of stuff. I don't really feel very intuitive. Like I know, I, I feel kind of stuck. Eckhart Tolle talks about the power of the now, right? Being in the moment mm -hmm. and just allowing yourself to be positive and grateful and and loving. And all of a sudden, that's when things start coming. And I yeah. think, Will, when you don't start your morning with a meditation, you can totally yeah. tell. Oh. Your vibes are down. Mm -hmm. I, I'll tell them, like, just go meditate. Yeah. <laughs> Walk yeah. away from me now. Yeah. Go meditate. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And when it's weird coming from me because I was the guy that, no, I have no time to meditate. What are you talking about? That's a mm -hmm. waste of time. But yeah. wow, does it make a difference? It sure does. Yeah. And if you can get to where you're doing silent meditations, that's when you can actually hear, get the messages from your guides. Because, and people are always like, well, but how do I know if it's, from my guides or how do I know if it's just my head making it up? Well, mm -hmm. if it's something that you've thought about before, it's probably your mind doing that. But if it's something like, oh, that's a, that's a brilliant idea or I never would have thought of that. Well, that's your guide sending you that message. That's why mm -hmm. silent meditation is, you know, if you can do that, that's really important to be able to connect to. It's really mm -hmm. interesting because I've been meditating now for several years on an almost daily basis. Karen just recently started meditating. She does much better at meditating silently than I do. I, I prefer to have the music or the guided meditations and things like that. But mm -hmm. she, when it's, when it's silent, that's when she sees the colors and she gets mm -hmm. vision and all kinds of stuff. I sit in meditation and I fall asleep. <laughs> Yeah. When it's it's distracting. <laughs> Someone's talking to me. I'm like, well, no, stop. <laughs> yeah. right. I do. I do like to have background like um, white noise or raindrops falling or something like that so that I'm not hearing every little noise in the house, like the refrigerator kicking on or something like that. So I do like that as well. Right. But I like music sometimes too. That can help. Yeah. Yeah. Certain tones. Just, oof, I, right was gonna, I was going to mention something so simple too that people, I know a lot of people see numbers and when I first started... Numbers were really important to me, and it was getting me realizing that my my angels and guides were actually contacting me. Now, I would see numbers like a lot of people see 111 and 555 and 333, and I was seeing those too, but I was seeing weird numbers like 414 was with me for like a year or more. And you can look up what they mean. And for me, the message was, you need to get help. You need to get help. I needed to free up more of my time so that I could pursue more of the spiritual stuff that I was diving into. Mm -hmm. And when I finally hired a manager to take over a lot of the stuff that I was doing in my day-to-day -day work, 414 disappeared. Ah. Wow. See, that's interesting because you, you do, you notice the numbers, the 111s, the 444s yeah. all the time. 444 incessantly. It it's is always 444 yeah. for it's everywhere for us. We posted on social media. For There was a time where in a single day I had like four or five of that 111s in one way or another. It was crazy. Yeah. But you don't think about different types of numbers. I don't know if I would notice that a 414 would be coming up all the time for me. I just, and it, you know, it's funny because it started with, that was our hotel room when we went to a hotel. And then I would see it on the, like the odometer on my car. That's where I would see a lot of numbers and license plates. And so I would see it like all, like two of them at once or, or two of them. And then a third one, like almost, you know, within minutes. Wow. So yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. It was weird. So I, I saw it in the hotel room from my, my father recently had a stint in the hospital. When That's I went right, to hospital, the, hospital. The, the, the number was in, it, his hospital room number. Uh, at the same time, it was, uh, I, I sent you a message without realizing it and we looked and the message was the same time. Like everything was. Just, yep. I was yeah. listening to a podcast and it just so happened that when I, when I paused it, it was right at that number. I mean, it was all these different things that was just hit, hit me in the face. I'm going to have to start looking for other numbers because maybe not successive numbers aren't the only thing that I'm being communicated. It's, yeah. it's probably other numbers I need to start looking out for. Yep, absolutely. Well, we, we teased it a little bit earlier on, but you have a very special connection to the harmonic egg. If you've not listened to our show on the harmonic egg, I urge you strongly to go back and listen to that because first of all, it is an amazing, amazing instrument mm -hmm. for lack of a better word. Uh, because it's not an instrument by itself. It, it is It is so much more than just that. But Gene, you actually have a special connection with these harmonic eggs. You heard about us, our show, through the creator of the harmonic egg, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So 
Yeah. When I was on this journey, I was, you know, I did the higher guidance life coaching. I did, I actually did an energy healing modality called the body code and got certified in that. Steve started his spiritual journey, which I didn't get a chance to talk about, but what I talk about in the book, he's got interest in sound healing. So we're like, what are we going to do with all this? Because we can't make the money that we're making at our business. So we were just like, what are we going to do with this? So I said, well, I'm just going to do it part time. And my higher guidance is going to tell me what, what we're going to do with it, right? And so about that time, I listened to another Gaia interview, Regina Meredith's show. She interviewed Gail Lynn, the inventor of the harmonic egg. And I'm listening to the show going, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> and I got done with it. And I went right to Steve. I'm like, you have to listen to this. And so we listened together. We were looking at each other and we're like, I think we're supposed to do this. Are we supposed to do this? I think, so. and of course, then I got the pendulum out and the pendulum just, <laughs> <laughs> right. so it, it was like May of 2020. And so, you know, Steve was not convinced right away. I mean, he got kind of excited about it, but we had a lot of talking to do because, you know, this would mean selling our business. It would mean moving across the country because we said, if we were going to do this, are we going to do it in Minnesota? No, I was, I'm done. I was done with the winter. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was hard because our families were in Minnesota and Wisconsin. That was the most difficult decision. But, um, we said, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it where we want to be, which was in the Phoenix area. And Phoenix was open and we didn't contact Gail right away because, we thought she's never going to believe us. If we have to sell a business, that's going to take a while. And, you know, so we said, we're just going to plan this out. We had, a, you know, I had to convince him. I was ready to jump ship like now, but, <laughs> right. but right. he wasn't. And so by the end of the year, we decided, yep, we're going to do this. So we had some people in mind to buy our business. And so after the first year, we did approach them and they were interested. So by 1st of March, we got an offer. And I'm like, okay, we're contacting Gail. And Gail said, yep, you guys are perfect. And after hearing our story and, you know, all through this, I kept checking with the guides and, you know, following what their guidance was on timing of things. And, and it all just landed perfectly. So between March and Ju July 1st, we sold our house. We found a house in Arizona against all odds. That was when the housing market was super crazy and you couldn't get a house. But we did in five days. Wow. Um, we And we sold the business by July 1st. And then we started, we opened this wellness center. And then we thought we were only going to get one egg. And turns out we were able to get two. So we have two harmonic eggs at, mm -hmm. at our wellness center. And then I do the higher guidance life coaching. I do the energy healing. Steve now not only does um, sound baths and his work with the sound healing with the Tibetan bowls and yeah, he's got the whole sound healing, you know, symphony. <laughs> oh, um, I think I would so get he, along really well with Steve. Yeah. And I'm he, all about sound healing and, and singing bowls and things like that. Yeah. He loves doing that. And um, he actually now does quantum touch, which is another energy healing modality. So he's really gifted at quantum touch. Yeah. It's similar to Reiki. It's just a different technique using breath work. And he, it's amazing. He gets. Wow. Wonderful Sounds results. Like talk to Steve. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> we need to have him on the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because you have a, you talked about uh, very flippantly just Phoenix area was open, but it wasn't at first when you check the the website, right? You talk about this whole story in your book, which is really clever. And yeah. your higher guidance can tell you, don't worry, don't worry. It's, it's going to be yours. It's going to be yours. And lo and behold, when it came time to, it was open. So I, yeah. I encourage people to pick up your book and uh, read that story because it's it's really really it just kind of hits you right smacks you in the face about uh, how powerful this inner inner guidance stuff is your higher guidance stuff is. yeah and it, it was fun to experience that whole journey but there was challenges along the way and that was one big challenge because phoenix was open when we made the decision suddenly it wasn't open anymore mm -hmm. and i panicked yeah. and my guides are like have faith jane yeah I, it was a test of my faith Right. And I passed the test. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was great. Well, your book is Trust Your Higher Guidance. And we're going to add a link directly to our show notes. So if you are interested in picking up her book, by all means, 
please go to our show notes. You can go to skepticmetaphysician.com, go to her episode page, and you'll see the link directly there. It makes it super easy to, to access the book. We'll also add all your social media links, a link to your website, all that kind of stuff on there. So if you want to connect to Gene, feel free to do that. We highly encourage you to do so. Gene, this has been a wonderful conversation. Time went by so fast that so fast. I, I don't know why it happens all the time. <laughs> uh, it almost feels like someone's telling me I'm talking too much, maybe. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your higher self? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Where's the pendulum? Is he talking too much? <laughs> no, no, we gotta go. We gotta go. Gene, uh, <laughs> uh, thank you so much. If, if someone wants to reach out, is the website the best place to, to do that? Yeah. So I have genehanson.com, Hanson with an O. <laughs> and the the website for the wellness center is realignyourlifeaz.com. Okay. If you're in the Mesa, Arizona area and you want to visit her, that's where to go. And if you haven't tried the harmonic egg and you're in that area, reach out to Jean because you won't regret it. They are amazing. Yeah, truly amazing. Jean, I thank you so much for coming and talking to us about your story and, and helping us connect to our intuition and our higher guidance and things like that. Uh, I look forward to maintaining in contact. Thank you so much, both of you, for having me. I really had fun today, so thanks again. And thank you for coming along on this journey of discovery. You know someone that would benefit from hearing the messages we shared on this episode or any of our others? Well, we'd really love it if you would do them a favor and share the show with them. It's super easy and you might just help change someone's life. And if you're listening to this on the radio and missed anything, not to worry. All of our shows, including this one, can be found at skepticmetaphysician.com, where you can also watch the videos or even send us email or voicemails directly from the site. We absolutely love feedback and would appreciate hearing from you. We hope that you've enjoyed this episode as much as we have. That's all for now. But we'll see you on the next episode of The Skeptic Metaphysicians. Until then, take care.